Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope we're doing well and today we'll be doing a box office update as we have some numbers coming in for Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage, and also some early indications of the overseas debut of No Time to Die slash James Bond 23. Three, is it now or no time to make money depending on how you look at it but before going any further please make sure you smash that like button light up that fire button if you're watching over on odyssey and also make sure you're subscribed to the channel with that bell notification turned on that way you know every time a new video or live stream goes live on the channel so as you can see let there be carnage not only is it doing better than what is expected but it is really doing a lot better than expected. Right now, the pace is set to be somewhere between 75 and $80 million or more for its domestic opening weekend, which indeed would put this film ahead of films like Shang-Chi. The only thing that might keep it back a little bit would be the fact that it does not have a holiday weekend like Shang-Chi had for at least its following Monday, but we'll have to wait and see just how much money it makes this weekend, as it might be enough, not only, of course, to beat the three-day to three-day comparison, which right now, based on how it is pacing, if it keeps up with it, it will absolutely beat the Shang-Chi opening weekend frame three days, but the four-day, maybe even then, could also be in for discussion as well. All this, while No Time to Die, is set to open up to over $100 million internationally as it opens up in the UK, amongst other places, before it finally opens up here domestically next weekend. Kind of insane that the film is actually coming out. Didn't think this day would ever come, especially for a film that has to make at least $750 million worldwide to break even. However, I think most people would look at that $100 million figure and say, hey, they're off to a pretty decent start at the very least. And so let's go ahead and dive into this. As it says, Saturday Report from Box Office Pro. Sony's theatrical exclusive play for Venom is paying off in a massive way. The studio reports their Marvel anti-hero sequel scored $37.25 million domestically on an opening day Friday, representing the second largest first day gross of any film in October behind Joker's 47.55 two years ago and of any film during the pandemic era behind only Black Widow's 395 million million dollars. So that is still very impressive that a film like this is going to be competing up with the likes of a Marvel Cinematic Universe film like Black Widow in July of all months. So again, very impressive there. Gotta definitely give some kudos. It says Carnage Friday Take includes the previously reported $11.6 million Thursday previews, though many people have been pointing out that one of the reasons why we saw such a high number for their previews is because, one, they started their previews much earlier than others, about three hours earlier than most other films, which tend to start around maybe 6 or 7 p.m. Also, the film is a relatively shorter movie, coming in around the 90-minute mark or so, hour, 30, hour, and 40 minutes, which means you can have a lot more showings in a day, which could end up being a huge uh, plus and a huge win for this film going forward, getting more screen times, more screen availabilities, etc. As it goes on to say there, meaning the true Friday range is around 25.65 million. By comparison, the first Venom opened to 32.5 million on opening day with 10 million from 5 p.m. previews, including a similar multiplier there. So what's interesting is that Venom 2 actually is, did better on the Thursday opening compared to the first, which is pretty pretty interesting, especially in the midst of pandemic times. You know, we constantly hear, right, the pandemic being used as an excuse as to why films are not doing as well. And yet in this case, we actually see a sequel happening and opening during pandemic times actually doing better. Again, some will try and point out that having that extra hour earlier and also possibly having just a slightly smaller runtime, run things like that might be a reason as to why that is the case. Really, it doesn't matter because the numbers are what the numbers are, and that's something that I always try and point out, that I just look at the actual numbers. Of course, we have to take things within certain context, but the numbers themselves are pretty clear. And the numbers are that Venom 2 did better in its Thursday, whereas for Venom, uh, the first Venom, it had 32.5 on its opening day, whereas in this one, it's got 37.25. Now, one thing also to keep in mind is that that is not taking into account 
any um, any uh, inflation, right? Any differences of inflation. So we're probably looking at a film that is doing roughly the same as what the original one did, which again, the fact that we're in a pandemic is a very good sign for this film, which is why you have them now talking about this film doing so much better than what the original estimates. Remember, original estimates were around 40 to $60 million. They then bumped it up to have it be between 60 and 80 million dollars now they're saying it's pacing so well that it's actually 75 to 80 million dollars plus so we'll of course wait and see what happens with today's numbers we'll have the official box office breakdown sometime tomorrow on the channel when we actually get those weekend estimates but hey very strong start for venom 2 looking pretty good and for a film that only cost about 10 million dollars more uh, that's pretty darn good as it says for the weekend projections are starting to narrow a bit but remain in flux sony is conservatively estimating 71.3 million for the three-day frame, but that's probably a worst-case scenario. Our internal projections suggest the film should at least hit the 75 to 80 million dollar range, and there's a solid chance of it exceeding 80 million. If it goes over the 80.3 million, that would top Black Widow at the best debut in the pandemic era yet, not to mention the first Venom's weekend, which currently ranks second all-time behind Joker's $96.2 million. Again, we'd have to probably look at the adjustments for inflation, but I'd imagine that they would still be relatively close to each other, which, as it points out, for the pandemic era itself would already be pretty impressive. And also, again, seems to kind of poke the hole in the, okay, I guess, you know, movies are just not making the money anymore or just, you know, pandemic is keeping people from going to see it because that clearly is not really the case going on right here. And I'm, you know, going to obviously try and be as, uh, you know, as realistic as I can with this. It's probably also available at a lot more screens, a lot more uh, screen availabilities before than the previous film had. Uh, again, the screen I know is like, what open at over 4,000 screens. The original maybe wasn't open as, as many, right? Having more show times, having an early start. All of these are factors that absolutely could play a role into it. But the fact that it is still doing well amongst all of the things going on, is still very much impressive. It says, No Time to Die setting pandemic records nearing previous Bond franchise benchmarks. So again, seems like there's some pretty good early signs that No Time to Die actually will be in a situation where maybe, just maybe, it'll make its money back. We'll have to wait and see. It's still got a long way to go for that, but let's see what it's saying. It says, That phase is expected to continue in earnest when No Time to Die bow bows in North America next Friday. For now, though, the highly anticipated 25th, so it's Bond 25, James Bond film, and Daniel Craig's finale as the iconic character scored another $27.2 million internationally on Friday and at $51.4 million so far. Universal and MGM estimate the total overseas haul to reach 112.9 million from 54 markets by the end of Sunday. That would set a pandemic record, and it'll be doing so without China. So, pandemic records being set here. The film, though, still needs to make 750 worldwide to break even. And if it does somehow get to that number, but a huge majority of that budget or a huge majority of the box office comes specifically from China when it opens there, obviously that will probably be something that we'll have to take into account as. We know how little these films get from China. And like for like markets, Universal estimates that No Time to Die is in line with Skyfall's box office openings and 21% below Spectre's excluding previews. So again, some good and bad news there. Notable among Bond's markets, the film added $7.6 million on Friday for a running cum and $14.2 million in the United Kingdom and Ireland. Friday represented the third highest ever Friday gross in October, as well as for the Bond series. Overall, it's the 12th highest grossing Friday in history for that market. Studio estimates over $30 million by the end of the weekend, of which would best Skyfall's debut there. So again, some good Good news coming out of the camp for No Time to Die for Daniel Craig's last film as James Bond. And again, set to make over $100 million in its overseas debut in over 54 markets. So really, it's going to be interesting, to say the very least, of what happens next weekend when we finally get the domestic opening. As the domestic opening is, is looking a little bit better uh, than previous estimates. You can see the estimates are up 11% domestically from the last time they had mentioned this. So it make, expected to make around 70 to $95 million opening weekend. And a projected total range domestically of 175 to 275. So if that number holds, if this film reaches closer to $200 million domestically, which they seem to indicate it's more likely going to be able to do, 
And if it is able to make over two to three hundred million dollars internationally, which if it's going to reach over a hundred million this weekend, over two hundred million dollars internationally, very much in the picture there. Uh, again, still would be in a situation where it needs to make a lot more than that to break even again to get that seven hundred fifty million dollar mark. Again, the only film up to this point during the pandemic time that has gotten even in that range was Fast and Furious Nine, and a lot of it had to do with the film's performance in China. So we'll, of course, have to wait and see on that. Uh, other things being talked about, of course, are films like Dune, which is not expected to do as well domestically, 35 to $45 million uh, for the domestic opening there, and that's going to be on the 22nd of October with the total amount being 85 to $130 million by the end of its run. So not set to be a big domestic opener for Dune. However, if things keep trending for these films going forward, like No Time to Die, and obviously films like Venom, Let There Be Carnage, it could indicate that a lot of people are starting to get back into the groove of going to see movies again, maybe. And so maybe those estimates will uh, maybe increase. We'll have to wait and see. As like for like, currently at this point in time, though, Venom is beating uh, Shang-Chi <laughs> pretty pretty uh, solidly at this point. As you can see, the first Friday number, and again, these include the Thursday premieres, $37.2 million for Venom Let There Be Carnage versus Shang-Chi's $29.5 million opening. So Venom Let There Be Carnage pacing ahead as of this moment of Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi was able to get to, as of right now, $368.5 million. It'll hit its break-even number this weekend, so we can expect that if Venom is going to be performing this well, and if not this well, possibly even better than Shang-Chi, that this film will probably make more than Shang-Chi, meaning probably north of $400 million, which would be more than what it needs in order for it to break even. As I mentioned previously, only costing $110 million, uh, adding on top of that the marketing cost. Again, these are all typical marketing costs, so these could be higher, obviously because of pandemic times, but based on these numbers, which are the only official numbers that we have available to us, $247.5 million is the break-even for Venom 2, which it could very well get, uh, get halfway to, at the very least, by the end of the weekend, depending on how well or how not well it does in the international marketplace. But anyway, just giving an update on these movies. Have you uh, seen uh, the movie No Time to Die yet? I know it's available. Again, in 54 markets, there are people from all across the world. And I know that sometimes we'll watch these box office breakdowns. So let me know your thoughts about this in the comment section below. And also, do you think that No Time to Die could make its money back with this strong potential opening? Again, it's still a little too early to tell there. It'll be a little harder to predict exactly how well this film will do overall because of this delayed release. I will do the very best that I can, though, to try and make some adjustments. What I'll probably end up doing is taking whatever it makes internationally this weekend and then just adding on the domestic opening and have that be uh, my first week uh, metric, essentially, and see if I can somehow uh, work to get the projections out that I normally do after the first two weeks of release, which would be a little bit more difficult to do, a little bit more math on my end, but I do want to be able to see if I can make some projections and just how close to those projections this film will end up doing, because again, I like to kind of show my methodology and have it be fully on display for people to see, criticize, and obviously, you know, provide some constructive criticism, even if there are some issues or some errors. But anyway, what are your thoughts about this? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, smash that like button, light up that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge shout out to all of my Patreon subscribe star and locals members, Andrew Hoyle, animation commentator, Brandon, Brian P., Christopher Bowman, Don Bruno de la Mancha, Father Christopher Miller, Hail to you, Father, Father Damian Cook, Garrett Searles, Harold Francis, Inflamed Wood, Jacob Juice, Jeffrey Toon, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Gomer Kyle, 79, Laura, the Modern Major General's Story, Mike Jackson, Dion, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mondo Spieler, Mr. Peabody, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Rosetta Allen, Stan Andrian, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, and Tina B, the Empress of the Universe. Thank you for being my Patreon members, and a huge shout out to my subscribe star members, The R, Fast Reaction, Nosferatsu Gatsu, John B, Perpetual Punster, Mr. Roy, 
Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss slash the new number two, J. Rod the Beer Guru, and ZK Man. Thank you very much for supporting me over on Subscribestar and to my one Locals member, Robert Barnes. Thank you for supporting me over on Locals. And if you want a name shouted out, or your name rather, shouted out at the end of every single live stream and video, please consider joining on one of those platforms, either Patreon, Subscribestar, or Locals. Links to that can be found in the description. Look at that top link especially. It's called the Willow link there. It'll give you links to all the social media platforms and also ways to support the channel. If you want to be an Army of Asgard level or above member, you can get access to giveaways that I do every single month. I give away 4Ks, Blu-rays, all kinds of stuff. It is a lot of fun. Also, if you join at the Keeper of the Bifrost level, you get access to all of that. Plus, you get access to an exclusive podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flick we have a lot of fun. We do that once or twice a month. And if you join at the Chosen of Valhalla level, you get all of that. Plus, in your first month, you get a t-shirt of your choice and send anywhere in the world. And also, you get to be featured on the channel once a month on the Chosen of Valhalla live stream where we get to hang out and have a good time. So anyway, if any of that sounds good, check out that link in the top of the video as I mentioned. You guys are amazing and beautiful people. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.